Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And I am in the place you would call Tucson. I say this for the listener, for the reader. For I see their ears and their eyes in a quantum state with me now. And that's what I want to speak to you about. That is the quantumness of God. That is the puzzle of logic. For what has happened in the city just recently would remain unexplainable to most. Humans want answers. And there are so many answers from so many places that don't satisfy. And this may be one of them. The reasoning escapes all of you because there are no reasons for such a thing. It is not pre-planned. There is no predestination. There was no certainty that on that day of the 8th of January that these things would take place. There are instead potentials. And so if you had the mind of God, you would have a layer of what we would call quantum logic, which is far larger than anything that you can conceive of. It's nothing that any earthling will ever be able to understand. For it is the mind of God. Yet humans carry in them the seeds of God. And humans carry in them that which is the creator energy. And so sometimes, just sometimes, we can make explanations that may not fit the logic puzzle of your reality, but you still understand at some level the appropriateness of all things. And yet you don't have the mind of God. There is a part missing from what you understand and what you know. It even goes beyond your intuition of what you could possibly see. Your reality as we see it in a quantum state is a series of potentials that are all together happening all at once. The lines that connect them is free choice. And so therefore, even as we speak, we know of the potentials that may occur that are both in your mind positive and negative. In what you would call a future time and to us, it is not. It is simply a soup of potentials. And so sometimes when we see a human being with free will and free choice, which is going to do something which you would call a tragedy. And an imbalance take lives. It is a potential on that which is what you might call the screen of what could happen. There's no guarantee. And yet the layers of logic of spirit use the synchronicity of what might happen in order to push and pull things around so that if it does there would be offsetting things that would be positive and good for the planet and this is the puzzle before you because it looks like God is involved <laughs> and therefore you would say well then God is involved in the tragedy why could this happen why would God let this happen And we get this constantly on your knees in sorrow, tears. If you're really God, you would not have let this happen. And the puzzle before you that is outside of your logic is this. 
that the potentials are known and there is no predestination we are in a quantum state where time does not proceed like it does for you even the date was unknown when the human would decide to pick that gun up and go to that place for whatever reasons and accomplish that potential free choice and so it is that that which you would call the creative energy or God works with humanity and free choice it is the test of the planet it always has been it is the crux of the energy that is developed here but you don't know how it works and so you come to judgment outside of the purview of all of the knowledge that you need to make a decision like that I'll give you an example a classic one that is given in logic classes even in your schools to show you what you're missing to show you sometimes how you think there was a championship frog it's a parable <laughs> and the championship frog was taught to jump when the owner of the frog yelled jump cause and effect was established the frog jumped every single time the question was put what would happen if you removed the legs of the frog and so they did the master yelled jump and the frog did nothing he just sat there no legs therefore all of the scientific journals of the day wrote up the experiment and it said it proved conclusively that removing the legs of a frog makes him deaf and you do that if you didn't know how a frog jumps wouldn't you and you'd accept that and it would be fine and you'd move on and as silly as it is to you it exemplifies you don't know what you don't know and therefore your logic is not the logic of God you don't have the mind of God you don't have the love of God but you're learning I sit in a place of advanced souls and the things I may tell you now you already know you've already dealt with this tragedy you're already working on it you already understand part of the puzzle before you and you're way ahead of me but there are those listening and reading who need to hear this so that they can put themselves where you are and take that which would seem to be sorrowful and abhorrent and turn it into a compassionate energy that will help this planet in positive ways that you cannot imagine there is an energy going on in this planet right now that is different than any before things are starting to happen here and if you've been alert and astute and taking notes <laughs> you'd have noticed that events such as this whether they are positive or negative seem to wind up on an international stage where everybody can see it and it's for a reason there are reasons for things and this is one of them so that you can see the effect of compassion we have told you the new energy that is being imbued into this planet by the crystalline grid of the ancients by those living now by the decisions of the harmonic convergence by the 2012 alignment all saying the same thing take a look at yourselves and do not accept these things whether they are good or bad negative or positive as simply things that always are look at the things you like and look at the things you don't like and decide what you're going to do about them. 
Your action may be sitting in meditation and sending energy to the planet, sending energy even to the one who sits in jail, who is also loved by God. You had something happen in October. And you'll remember it for a very long time. 33 miners came out of the ground. And for a few hours, the entire earth celebrated 33 lives. And here is an example, dear human being, of something you've never seen before. The earth can generate compassion without death. Good news. Compassionate news. Reunited families. Beauty. And the 33, and the 33, over and over, 33 letters in the, in the message, 33 hours to get them out, 33 men. And they ask, what does the 33 men, what mean, what could it possibly mean? And we told you again and again, the numerological aspects of 33 is the compassion of the Christ. And it's been before you, so you could look at it. It's not a mistake. It is a lesson. And the lesson is this. You can get just as much attention <laughs> and create just as much compassion with something that is beautiful than that is tragic. And this is new for the planet. There are several axioms to remind you of that are new. And the number one is that these things will be spotlighted from now on. From now on. They haven't been. In the past, this actually could have remained local. And it wasn't. I'll show you that in a moment. I'll give you some things to think about, the synchronicity of it all. Here's another axiom. That compassion from a light worker has at least ten times the energy of helping the planet from the compassion of one who is not an old soul and has never awakened to the Creator inside. Therefore, if you're going to have a compassionate action on the planet, let it happen where there are a lot of light workers. You see, now Spirit did not create this tragedy. But because spirit knew of the potentials of it, there were certain kinds of things synchronistically that worked its way. You don't know how a frog jumps. It's going to sound like spirit planned it, and we did not. Let me tell you about the rules. <laughs> Before we even speak of the event, let me speak of the rules of God. God loves all unconditionally. Rule number one, number two. God does not punish humanity. This city did nothing wrong. The people that were involved did nothing wrong. And yet human beings want to go to their knees in guilt and say, what is it? that would have created such a thing in our backyard to our people, to the child, to the legislator. And to the six who are not here anymore, what would we say to that? What did we do wrong? And why us? And that is always the question, is it not? And you wring your hands and ask for answers. Because we knew of the potentials of a human being with free choice doing what he did, it was not that difficult for us to work with it. We could not stop the human being, and we never will. Any more than we could have stopped those that boarded the airplanes and flew them into buildings. Where 3,000 people died, horrible deaths, crushed. And it wounded the very heart of the nation. And they cried out, you could have stopped them. 
Oh, the humanity. They say, you could have stopped them. And this is what you should know. The rules are this. Human being free choice will always trump the actions of God. But because we knew it might happen, synchronistically, we had those ready with cameras. <laughs> synchronistically, everybody caught it. Synchronistically, the entire nation could have the compassion which went right into the crystalline grid, which will never be the same. And the 3,000 knew it. And so did the six. Standing on the other side of the veil years ago in your time to us today, we saw the potential. We see the potentials of what those unborn will do. They are only potentials, but they are in the soup of our reality, our quantumness. You don't know how the frog jumps, so you cannot fathom what this must look like. It's not predestination. It is predisposition. You are predisposed to follow perhaps a karmic path. For that which has you come to the earth with the parents that you have, with an unbalance that might occur with the actions that then may result. And we knew it before he was ever born. And that means that we knew at a level you cannot fathom the ones who went there that day to receive the bullet they knew too not consciously and I spoke to them before they came in here's the potential see it you're a piece of God right now about to become a human being and give away the power and all of the knowledge that you have and yet go down there once again and serve this planet almost blind to the dimensions that you know, working in 3D, running into the walls of a misunderstanding. And look at the potential. You might not last long. I spoke to the nine-year-old. My dear, you may only have nine years, maybe a little more. And you know what she said to me? If it'll help the planet, that's what I'll do. And you wonder why we wash your feet. It's not up to God to stop these things, but we can do everything that is within the purview of what we are allowed around human free choice to make the best of it. And so let us speak of the event. Why Tucson? I want to make a statement so that you'll understand this. For one of the questions is when can we really truly start the healing of Tucson? When could we say we've turned the page and now we're healing? We've, we've mourned enough and now we're, we're ready to get into another way where we can heal these, these lands and these hearts and all that. When will it start? I'll tell you and you're not going to understand. It started before he was born. It started on January 8th that the earth would have compassion for what happens here on an international stage to the point that it would help peace on earth come quicker. And you wonder why the six... I want to tell you, they're on the other side right now looking back at you. And they're saying to you, we did our part. Make it worth it. <laughs> Make it worth it. We stepped right into it. Why Tucson? Why here? Oh, dear ones, listen to the synchronicity of this and understand. This is a healing place. It's a clean place. The indigenous made it that way. It's a precious place. The ancestors knew of the potentials here. And the purity of the land itself, pristine, could accept this tragedy and it could go into it in a precious way. 
without blocking anything. In less than a week, you gather in an international way to honor what? The beauty of gems. <laughs> it's an artist colony. It's where beautiful things take place. It's the home of authors who have books of love. That's why Tucson. Because it is taken place in the cauldron of wisdom. And the ancestors are here to validate and verify what I am saying. You, as you sit there, dear human being in this room, are part of the ancestor energy. Some of you are your own ancestors as you sit here. You know of what I speak. There is wisdom in these words. If it was going to happen anywhere, let it be here. For this is the energy of wisdom. And it will be able to generate a compassion that no other place would understand but this one. For those who deal in art, in music, in beauty, in sound, in light, are wise old souls. And there's a lot of them here. Oh, let me give you something to think about. And I'll just get right to the elephant under the table. Was it political? <laughs> doesn't matter you cannot assign judgment or blame and spirit will not but here is an interesting fact because of the target that he chose and that which is political in the tragedy and the attributes of it it brought the president here <laughs> And then it was international, wasn't it? And then it became the compassion of the planet for just a moment and not the compassion of Tucson or even of the United States. Do you see what that did? We couldn't control the shooter. Nor would we ever. Free choice. But the synchronicity around it Let us help make it into a compassionate event that would help the planet. You don't know what makes the frog jump and some of you are still getting confused. I want to take you back to 1999 to show you how unusual this is. 1999. Two young men walked into a school in Colorado loaded with weapons. And they proceeded to shoot their classmates. And a lot more than six were killed. Can you imagine being a parent that day? You send your child to school, you expect them to come home. And the grief was great, and the compassion was great, and the tragedy was there to see, and there was no presidential visit. Hmm. Are you starting to see this? 2006. A very unbalanced man walked into a precious place, an Amish schoolhouse, and killed the children. There could be no greater dichotomy than this. The Amish are already sacred, compassionate, gentle, harmonious people. And in walked that which was pure evil to them. And the whole community reeled with sorrow. And the president did not visit. Now here's what I'm telling you. It took center stage and for one reason. So that what a human being did here in free choice will actually create compassion for the planet and an energy will be created far, far, far greater than any tragedy that you might assign to it. And that is the logic of God. You don't know how a frog jumps. 
And all that phrase means is that there is so much here hiding. The six who left you, who you will mourn. The son of Patricia who left you, who you will mourn. We'll all be back. And as they return and as they grow up, they are growing up in an energy that they helped create because of the compassion that was felt at their departure. That is the logic of God. And it's about peace on earth. It's about that which you are creating, which is changing the paradigm of your reality. And compassion is the key. And so, human being, what are you going to do with that? <clears throat> Last week, I gave you a message about the potentials of 2011. And there were those in the room who attended. And I'm going to repeat something I said there, for you need to hear it, and it has to do with politics. It would seem intuitive to every single human being in the room that in order to accomplish what you do as Americans in Congress, you must have at least two parties. For that is the way it has always been. The red and the blue. What if I told you that there will come a time when there will be no parties. And you will say, well, that's impossible. It's impossible, crying because you're not human. You don't know how funding works, you say. <laughs> it's got to be a party that, that creates the, the, the power to, to raise money for the ones who cannot. And it's spread around, and this is the way we work. And it, if you didn't have parties, you would, you'd have no funding. Nobody could, could advertise. No one could get elected. Oh, really? <laughs> Are you aware right now? You have a president who was elected on the internet. He figured it out. When everybody can talk to everyone, you have plenty of funding. A few dollars here, a few dollars there. You talk to millions at the same time. They talk to millions at the same time. It's a new paradigm of communication. The young people know all about it. And you can't stop it. It is a worldwide communication. It doesn't matter how many laws you pass. It doesn't matter what you decide, who is in charge. You can't stop it. It's out of the bag. This is how community, how, how the communities are going to be communicating. This is how the politicians are going to be communicating to you, literally coming into your home in a holographic form, perhaps, and explaining their position one by one, without a party. And you will elect them to your Congress without a party. And they will sit in the chairs without a division, and there will be no such thing as the aisle. And that human being is called unity. And there is a paradigm that you cannot even imagine. And it's in the works. And then you'll have a Congress that works together and gets things done. Compassion and unity are the new key words of the planet. Tucson is part of it. I want to congratulate those in the room who already knew all of this. <laughs> and you've been working this puzzles since January 8th. Who have been healing the land. Sending compassion to those left. Trying to explain it to those who needed to have it explained. There is love here. There are reasons here. There is appropriateness here. You're all working the same puzzle. There'll come a day when you'll understand it all. When I see you on the other side of the veil, briefly before you come back, you'll know how the frog jumps. And we'll look at each other and smile, and you'll go, ha oh, ha ha. Send me back. I've got work to do.
did you know that's why I'm here? To explain these things as best I can. I give these things to you in pure love. Pure love. And no conditions here. Whether you believe me or not. Whether you believe this is real or not. Whether you agree with me or not. I see God in you. And that's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. And so it is.